Let's take a tour of the oral cavity and see up close some pretty typical examples of normal anatomy and its variation using fluorescence visualization with Velscope. A brighter homogeneous green color is usually indicative of healthy tissue. This is due to the combination of predominantly green fluorescence from both the epithelial and stromal layers. Here we see the hard palette which shows, generally speaking, as a broad expanse of green. The soft palette is also generally green. The darker areas around the borders of this image are from shadowing due to the way the blue light has been directed at the tissue. Here we see the buccal mucosa, with the highly fluorescing teeth on the right of the picture. The buccal mucosa is also typically green, but is also a high-risk site for trauma and consequent inflammation. It is quite typical to see at least some little patches of darkness, as we see in this picture at the back, which shows some mild trauma and inflammation with a resultant dark patch through the velscope. This is a fairly unremarkable picture of the floor of the mouth, presenting generally speaking as a bright green with some loss of fluorescence around the sublingual gland. In a few minutes we'll see that this can be much more pronounced in some cases. Here are some pictures of the lateral border of the tongue. Notice the boundary between the dorsal surface populated by fungiform and filiform papilla and the lateral border. You'll notice some darker areas along the edge of the dorsal surface of the tongue corresponding to the scalping marks from the teeth that are also evident under white light. We'll talk more about this effect in a minute, but the tongue lateral border proper looks quite bright and unremarkable. This is a nice view of the ventral surface of the tongue, again presenting as generally bright. Nothing of much concern here. We have to remember, with fluorescence visualization, different oral structures have their own particular appearance or fluorescence pattern, just as they have their own unique appearance under white light. Here we see that healthy tissue that is a generally homogeneous pattern of bright and dark areas. The dark spots are the fungiform papilla that appear dark because of blood perfusion and the lack of much keratin, and the smaller bright spots are the filiform papilla. These have keratinized tips which fluoresce quite brightly under velscope. So here we are seeing examples of some of the underlying concepts that were explained in the science module. Blood is a strong absorber and causes the perceived fluorescence to decrease. And keratin fluoresces, which causes the perceived fluorescence to increase. This is a velscope picture of the floor of the mouth and the corresponding area under white light illumination. The ventral surface of the tongue is also partially visible at the back. Again, we see the theme being played out here of blood's role as a strong absorber in fluorescence visualization. The area around the sublingual gland can be well vascularized, and is particularly so in this example, showing up as a symmetrically dark area under velscope. Although the symmetry and shape of this dark area under velscope is suggestive of normal tissue, the floor of the mouth is a high-risk area for dysplasia. Watch out for non-symmetrical areas giving a unilateral presentation. These should increase suspicion of dysplasia or oral cancer. This is the label mucosa on the upper lip, the blood vessels again showing up dark under the scope. Label mucosa, this time on the lower lip, presenting similarly as the upper lip. Some oral mucosa appear homogeneously dark under velscope due to their structural characteristics. A good example is the attached gingiva, which, while having a typically light pink appearance in white light, appears dark under velscope. The unattached gingiva immediately adjacent to the attached gingiva have a brighter appearance, more typical of other mucosal tissues. This makes the mucogingival junction readily apparent under velscope. The theme of symmetry and bilateral presentation is again evident here. This principle is one of the keys to helping us decide what belongs and what doesn't.
The minor salivary gland openings on the hard palate can sometimes appear as dark spots when using Velscope as well. The anterior tonsillar pillars can be particularly well vascularized and therefore can appear quite dark with fluorescence. Notice how the reddened areas under white light correspond to the darkened areas through the velscope. Some structures in the mouth have quite a remarkable appearance under velscope. A good example is the palatine tonsil. The areas of dense vascularization and inflammatory cells appearing quite dark. Again, evident in these pictures is the darkened anterior tonsillar pillar. Occasionally, collections of so-called lymphoid aggregates can populate the rear oropharyngeal wall and because of their blood content have a strikingly dark appearance when viewed under fluorescence visualization. Close examination of this same area under white light, which can be accomplished as we have here with a good white light clinical photograph taken with a flash, reveals that these dark areas exactly correspond to the red nodules of lymphoid tissue. These are a normal variant that are completely benign. This is the same patient with a good view, both in white light and with fluorescence, of the palatine tonsil and oropharynx. Again, the somewhat alarmingly dark area on the rear pharyngeal fold is just another lymphoid aggregate, and it's also quite evident under white light. Here are some particularly nice photographs showing the right and left side of the back of the throat. These types of pictures give you a sense of the power of fluorescence in helping you visualize some of the rich structure present in the oral cavity. After seeing the pronounced loss of fluorescence associated with lymphoid tonsillar tissue, it should be no surprise that the lingual tonsils also present quite darkly under fluorescence visualization. Here we see two examples of the orange-red color from the porphyrin fluorescence generated by bacteria. The tongue is the area in the mouth which is most commonly observed, and it's quite common for bacteria to get trapped amongst the carpet of filiform papilla, or in the fissures that can sometimes develop, as can be seen in the lower photograph. Earlier we saw that the attached gingiva typically appear dark under velscope, although they naturally appear pale pink under white light. Here's another reason that they can appear dark under velscope, but in this case it's for the same reason that they appear dark under white light, the absorption of light by melanin. In addition to the orange fluorescence from the bacteria on the tongue, quite distinct melanin pigmentation of the papilla can be seen here under fluorescence. As we might expect, the melanin-pigmented papilla also appeared quite dark in white light. The oral environment is naturally subject to various forms of irritation and consequent inflammation. Blood vessel dilation associated with inflammation results in a higher blood content in the tissue, the net result being a darkened area at the inflamed site due to increased absorption of light. Certain areas of the mouth are more prone to this than others, in particular the lateral border and tip of the tongue, the buccal mucosa, and the hard palate. It's quite common for the lateral border and tip of the tongue to be inflamed due to chronic irritation from teeth, and thus appear darker under velscope. I like the white light picture here because the redness along the lateral border is well visualized and corresponds directly with the homogeneous dark band seen through the velscope. Of course, everybody's different, and what we've just seen isn't always the case. The corresponding areas on these tongues are comparatively bright. The appearance of the tongue will depend on oral habits and the structure of the mouth. Larger dark spots can sometimes be seen on the dorsal surface of the tongue. This is likely due to patchy wearing down of the filiform papilla from use of the tongue as it comes into contact with food and or teeth. The result is a dark patch due to the loss of keratin fluorescence from the filiform papilla. Buccal mucosa is quite often an area of chronic irritation and mild inflammation. 
here we see a fairly classic presentation of linear ALBA under Velscope. Under white light, you can see that a white line corresponding to keratinized tissue right along the bite line. This can sometimes show up as a bright line under Velscope due to keratin fluorescence, but more typically appears, as you see here, with the associated mild inflammation dominating and showing the area as predominantly dark. Keratin fluorescence can be seen as little bright spots along the bite line. Notice the diffuse borders of the inflamed region as it fades away into the brighter green of the rest of the buccal mucosa. This is quite typical of inflammation. Chronic irritation of the buccal mucosa from the teeth has in this case led to two pronounced dark patches rather than a line. Still, the principle is the same. Again, notice the diffuse borders of the dark inflamed areas under Velscope. Also, the vessel damage with the extravasated blood, also no doubt associated with trauma, has a corresponding very dark presentation under Velscope, which is entirely to be expected. An analogous phenomena to linear alba on the buccal mucosa can occur on the labial mucosa due to irritation from the front teeth. In this case, we see classic mature non-inflamed hyperkeratosis, which appears brighter under the velscope due to keratin fluorescence. Note also how well the dense collections of blood vessels can be visualized under fluorescence due to loss of fluorescence from blood absorption. This is another interesting presentation of a normal variation that can be seen in white light and fluorescence visualization of the hard palate. The bilateral presentation is a good sign that this is some sort of benign variation, and we don't know for sure why this happens. But the darker red appearance of the hard palate under white light and the pronounced darkness through the velscope seem to suggest that the tissue has become hypervascularized, perhaps in response to oral habits or maybe as a result of anatomical variation. This is an example on the hard palate of inflammation, quite a common area for irritation and local trauma. In this case, the dark areas under Velscope correspond to the irritated and sore looking areas under white light. As it turns out, the patient had been sucking on hard candies before coming to the dentist. This is a good example, albeit a trivial one, of the importance of patient history in trying to understand the nature of soft tissue abnormalities in the mouth. The soreness and inflammation and resultant dramatic appearance under Velscope have an obvious explanation. Mystery solved. If this same presentation had occurred in a 50-year-old patient with a history of drinking and smoking and with no other obvious acute cause, we might have approached it differently. We've always got to remember that the presentation under the Velscope is only part of the picture. It must always be contextualized within the larger clinical picture. Similarly, the white light presentation is also only part of the picture. Palpation is another critically important part of the oral examination process, as is the acquisition of a proper medical history with identification of relevant risk factors.